Hey everyone, Brooke here. I hope wherever you are in the world, today is treating you well. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about alternate day fasting and following a raw foods diet and how I'm using both methods to lose weight and to upgrade my life physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I'm also going to be talking about why I am never going to get any type of plastic surgery, how we live in an ageist society, and why we should really embrace the beauty we were born with. Before I begin with today's video, if you are interested in videos like this, if you like the different style videos that I post here on this channel, please leave a comment below. Please introduce yourself. I am looking to meet other people that are going through the same thing, that have life goals they are trying to attain, or someone that is just looking to, you know, change their life and, and get some tips. Um, I'm really looking forward to using this platform as a way to hold myself accountable um, and also meet other like-minded people. Now, with that said, let me jump into today's video. So two things, I'm actually going food shopping right now. So I wanted to make this video quick because I'm making videos daily. And also I have one of my cats is on my um, my van right now. Let me see, you probably can't see him because it's uh, the camera, but he if you hear a little pitter patter, that's my cat Pepper that I adopted. That was a stray cat that runs my house now. So there's that. Um, so if you hear that, just ignore it. Um, I'm going to be talking about pretty much my alternate day fasting right now, day six, and I'm feeling good. You know, it's funny because I've been doing alternate day fasting for a few months now. I stopped for like weeks, you know, on and off, but I feel good. And I feel like when I first started alternate day fasting, I was someone that was off the on the heels of having done intermittent fasting for like 10 years when I was training in martial arts that I really want to get back to at some point. But I felt like that was that was hard to do, but then it was very attainable. And the same thing with alternate day fasting, you know, I, when I first started doing it, I was like, this is such like a fad type of thing. I was thinking in my head, but only after a few days of doing it, I was like, you know what? Like alternate day fasting, I feel like is truly the way we're supposed to eat. Um, it, not even to sound radical, but think about it. Like you're fasting, let's say on a Monday you eat, right? And now the way I'm, I'm following my, my fasting and my feast days is that I'm following more raw foods diet. I'm trying to get as much raw foods as I can on my feast days, help avoid binging, getting full on whole foods as opposed to getting, you know, carved up and, you know, having crashes and things the next day that'll make me get off my fast. But you're fasting on a Monday or you're eating on a Monday and then you're eating all good foods. That's not going to give you any kind of hanky cravings the following day. And then you're fasting on a Tuesday. So if you stop eating on 8, 8 p.m. on Monday, then, you know, you go back to eating, I don't know, 12 o'clock on, on Wednesday, right? So you have all that time between Monday night, Tuesday, full day, and then, you know, in the morning, um, Wednesday, where your body's not consuming any food. And you're really hitting the autophagy you know, you're, you're igniting autophagy in your body. And autophagy is very anti-aging. It has many different properties. It eats the bad, the, the old cells in your body and it, it like, attacks the fat. So I feel like when you're doing alternate day fasting, you're really hitting the autophagy. Granted, if you go longer, you'll get more out of it. I'm in the stage of my life where I'm so busy, I wouldn't be able to do like two or three week fasts. But I do hope one day to visit Lauren Lockman in Tanglewood Wellness Center in Costa Rica when my life is a little more stable and calm and I'm able to take that time away from my kids. But I feel like alternate day fasting is is the best of both worlds you're not going a crazy amount of time without food but you are hitting the autophagy goals and the other goals um going long enough where your body's starting to you know go after the fat reserves in your body and i feel like it's just such a great balance it's such a great machine the way your body is going from you know feast and then you know famine kind of like it's just not eating and it's giving your body a chance to restore itself right because when you're eating that's the most energy like producing function of your body like when your digestion is like when you're eating let's say you eat a big meal now your body's like all in digestion mode whereas when you're not eating it's focusing on other areas fatty liver thyroid just got gallstones i mean so many different issues it's focusing on it's clearing your body and i feel like it's such a great way to really maintain health and wellness and lose weight so i'm only on day six but i am feeling good i'm feeling like i'm at the point where i really have to like 
just stay focused and not get distracted. And um, that's why I'm making these videos and I'm late. I'm going to be, like I said in the other video, I'm just going to keep saying it. I'm going to be late posting just because I don't have the time to edit every single day. But if you just go through my playlist, you'll see episodes, you know, they're going to be numbered. They're going to be by the day. Um, so hopefully, you know, there'll be episode 80 where I'm finally at my weight loss goal and it'll help inspire others to get the, to get there as well. But I feel like alternate day fasting is just, it's just a great way for your body to, you know, to repair itself, to heal itself, to lose weight, to get to a homeostasis to really deal with other issues that your body would not be able to deal with had it been digesting food. So it's pretty much where I'm getting at. But um, but that's where I'm at with that. You know, I'm going to keep trucking along, focusing on eating as much raw foods as I can, um, focusing on, on, on drinking a lot of smoothies and going with salads, staying away from bread, even wraps. Like I allowed myself to have a wrap a few days ago. And as soon as I have a wrap, it's like, um, like a literal like flour type of wrap or even if it's gluten free like I'm craving bread I have such an addiction to like bread. I love bread. You know, I don't know if that's the Italian in me I have no idea, but I love bread. I love pastries, you know, even as a vegan like people think that when you go vegan Oh, it's so healthy. Not really if you're not gonna eat like real food It's you're you're not really getting anything out of it other than not eating meat, right? So um, I know a lot of fat vegans. <laughs> I know a lot of very healthy vegans, but I know mainly overweight vegans. And it's because they're eating their favorite, like, you know, comfort food that's now just vegan. So that's for another video, but I'm, I'm just staying on top of it. And I'm really doing the best that I can um, to get the most out of this alternate day fasting lifestyle. Down a few pounds. I feel good about it. I have a lot more to go and I'm just trying to celebrate the small wins, be consistent and not so hard on myself because I am like the biggest bully to myself. Um, but I also want to talk today about uh, plastic surgery and this is not to shade anyone who gets it because I feel like you know you're your own person you can do whatever you want you know people feel good when they get plastic surgery get maybe get a nose job maybe get different things but I want to talk specifically about like Botox and as I'm getting into you know being 36 in December December 18th is my birthday I have friends in my life that are starting to get Botox and I feel like there's such a pressure for women specifically um, to look younger. But what people don't realize is that like, at least in my opinion, I don't think Botox or fillers actually makes you look younger. Okay, it'll take your, your wrinkles, like it'll push your wrinkles out, it'll take it away. But I really don't feel like it's, it's like an anti-aging thing. I just don't feel like that. And when I see that people get it, it's not that I judge them so much as I feel like society sucks, right? Like society is so ageist. Once women hit like 25, it's like you're over the hill, you aged out. But that's crazy because your life just began. And I try to put it on my daughters that, you know, your beauty's from within as well. You know, it, it doesn't matter what you look like. A lot of times, like, you know, it doesn't matter how, how much makeup you put on or whatever. Like it's the beauty's from within. It's the character. You know, you ever see someone from across the room and, and maybe they, you know, they look grumpy or whatever, but they look over you and they smile and they just have like a beaming energy about them and it's like you know you smile back and like that's the energy exchange that's the beauty of life and communication and, and human interaction and I feel like with and social media specifically it, it really takes away the human element of people you know even taking pictures and and being around each other everybody's so worried about what they look like and now in 2022 you know you have women that are like competing with filters I mean there's literally these th this type of uh, procedure called five Fox eyes. Very good friend of mine from childhood is getting it done. And I'm like, don't do it. Like, do not do it. She already gets so much Botox. And I'm like, wh like, why? You know, you don't look younger. You just look different, you know? And one thing that I really try to put on my, on my children as well is that, you know, as we age, you want to really work on aging gracefully. Now, granted, my daughters are 15, 13, and eight. So they have fantastic youthful skin they're children you know um but as you get older like I st I'm starting to have wrinkles and fine lines and it's like that's your roadmap of your life right it's the expressions that you've had it's what it's the the happiness you've dealt with the grief you've dealt with you know the just the things you've thought about it's literally just it's who you are it's it's the map of your life and it all tells a story my midwife is 80 years old god bless her she's turning 80 next month and she's one of the most gorgeous people I've ever met in my life never touched a needle 
drinks a lot of water, you know, she's big into her fruits and vegetables and her salmon. And, um, if I said that right, salmon fish, <laughs> um, but she is someone that, that takes care of herself and she has been through so much. Her face has many different wrinkles on it, but it all tells a story. You know, um, she was in Africa, the Congo, and she was delivering babies literally that could not make it to the one hospital they had in like a hundred mile radius. Um, so she was literally with a stethoscope and saving these babies lives and incredible woman, incredible story, you know, and I look at it like that um people like that and they're, and they're comfortable and you know you hit a point in your life where you're like you know I, I lived my life I feel good and I wish these young like Instagram models and these young girls who are 19 getting getting uh fillers and like you know Botox because they're trying to prevent wrinkles it's like celebrate who you are don't compare yourself to friggin AI technology that's trying to make you feel bad because the filter makes you look five years younger it's it's just all smoke and mirrors we have to live in reality we have to celebrate who we really are there has to be some type of genuinity if that's even a word um with with how we display ourselves and who and who we talk to and how we are to people and how we you know we just look at the world right like you don't want to always look at things through a filter it's just it's not real you know then you're living in like you know the metaverse right that's what that's just what it seems like and not to get on like a whole tangent but i just i feel so strongly about like people who are just competing with father time like you cannot could that is a, a battle you will lose every single time so for me in my house and my life and who i am and what i try to do with myself i am someone that will never pick up a sword against father time because i lost before i even picked it up like i'm not going to start getting cosmetic surgery i'm not going to start you know getting fillers getting a nose job you know um I'm just not going to do these things, you know, even with like weight loss. Um, I feel like there is a certain percent of the population that would that does well with like lap band surgery. Um, I think it should be looked at as like a last resort to lose the weight, because I feel like if you have discipline and you really apply yourself that you're able to lose the weight. But um, things like that, that's different. But I'm talking mainly from like cosmetic point of view. I feel like people have so much to offer and they're just they just shortchange themselves every time because they're comparing themselves to others. They're trying to look young when in reality, you're just changing who you are. And, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, live up to these impossible beauty standards. You know, if you're a woman of age, if you're over 40, if you're over 50, if you're over 60, celebrate it, you know, celebrate it, be a good person, you know, take care of yourself, age gracefully, like drink a lot of water. Like there's things you can do that you can look more vibrant at any age. And I truly believe that. Um, another reason, well, truly the, the, the number one reason, aside from like the vanity, why I wouldn't get fillers or cosme or Juvederm or anything like that is because I'm very, I'm very against animal testing. I am like so against animal testing and I know that Botox is tested aggressively on like rabbits in, in labs and like it's it's just heartbreaking. It's completely heartbreaking and everything that I use in my life, I make sure it's, you know, it's got the Leaping Bunny logo on it. I do not use things that are tested on animals. Um, I am someone, I love animals. I am a hardcore animal rights activist. Um, I don't like to talk about it too much because I feel like people they'll look at that and be like, oh, you know, you're, you're fringe or whatever. But that's, I, that's who I've been my whole life. I don't push that on people. I respect people's, you know, opinions and their lifestyles. But for who I am, like the reason why I don't do certain things is that I really love animals. And, um, I, I can't imagine ever getting something like that, like getting filler, knowing that that could have, that could have paralyzed the bunny somewhere. You know, that's how I think. I just can't do it. Right. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about that real quick because I feel like our, our society is so ageist and annoys the hell out of me. It truly annoys me. And, you know, I have Instagram and at me, Brooke, if you want to follow me, um, Brooke with two E's because I couldn't get the first one because um, somebody took my other, you know, the original username. But, I, you know, I'm on Instagram and I see like these these people like the, the even the filters right if i want to make a story and i just swipe through the filters it makes you look like a different person and i feel like people stop living in reality and they start living through like these filters and constantly having a screen in front of them and constantly feeling like they're not good enough unless they have like you know some type of filter on them and it's like then they go and they get fil fillers and they get botox and they get juvederm and they get all these things that you know they try to lift themselves up to compare to what they look like on social media but it, it's just not realistic it doesn't ever work and then you look like 
like a pillow face in five years, you know? Don't do that to yourselves. Truly, like, you know, celebrate natural beauty, really. And even if you don't think you're beautiful, you are beautiful. If you're a good person, that'll come out. That If you're like, let's say a four, right? Let's be honest, if you're a four, if you feel like you're a three or a four, if you're a good person, if you're nice, if you treat people well, you're jumping up to a seven or eight, solid eight, nine. You know, you're, you're gonna look a lot better. You smile at people, you're not like, you know, just a mean person, vindictive, you know, shady, talk behind people's back. Like that really shows on your face. And, you know, there are, are Z-list celebrities I'm not going to mention, um, Trisha Paytas, but, you know, somebody like that who is just not a good person, in my personal opinion, like I just not a good person. She can get all the Botox and all whatever she wants, you know, done to her face. You still look awful because you're just not a good person. I hope you change. I wish you well. But like, you can't hide who you are. And I feel like, you know, at, no matter how many filters, you know, you put on your face and how much, how many needles you put inside and, you know, whatever makeup you put on or whatever hairstyle you rock, it's always going to come out who you are inside. Um, and I feel like it's just important that we celebrate and we, and if you're not a good person, right, let's say, let's say you have an attitude problem, right? When I was running my business for 10 years, you know, at, towards the end, I was, I didn't like who I was becoming. So you change it. You change, you can always change. You're not, you know, you're not like cemented in, in the ground. You can change. We're fluid beings. You can change. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can always be better. And in my life, I always do my best to, to be the best person that I can be. And that's been with character changes or, or even just like, let's say, like with dealing with stress. If I get snappy, if I, uh, if I feel like I'm more anxious, if I feel like I'm quick with people, if I feel like I'm not being as nice, which I saw at the end of my business, I was like, you know what? I don't like that person. So that's not going to happen anymore. We're going to work on changing that. And I have. Um, and I feel like, you know, my cat just slid down the, the rear room, the mirror. But, um, but I just wanted to vent about that real quick. Cause I know it's like kind of all over the place. I, it's just annoying, right? It's just annoying. Like celebrate who you are. Women don't expire at 25, right? Like we don't, like we have so much to offer. You know, women are, are very intelligent creatures where we're wonderful, right? Celebrate who you are celebrate your diversity, celebrate your strength, celebrate your, your kindness, right? Like it shows up on your face. Um, I hate that we live in such an age of society because we're judged based on how long we've been on earth when we should be celebrated. Like I truly believe if you're 75 years old, you made it. You've been here 75 years. Good for you. Congratulations. You know, there's so many people out there that wish they could meet that, that. And I pray to God that I can get there. Right. Um, but I feel like it's just so important to to really like focus on your character and that will be your anti-aging secret. That will be your Botox. That will be something that will help you age gracefully. Um, so with that said, I will let you guys go. Um, I do want to do like little skincare reviews. I actually ordered Osea. I think it's called for the first time. I use the, um, the body deli stuff. Like I'm into all that stuff, but I just, you know, that's only going to work so much because father time is father time, but you know, you eat well, you're a good person. You treat people well. Um, you're kind to animals. That's a big one. I feel like like it really does, you know, does help. But, uh, but with that said, I'll let you guys go and I will check you back again on day seven. Take care, friends.